Okay, uh, this is Dr. Mitchell, and we're going to just go through a primer here of the immune system to set us up for what we're going to talk about in class regarding uh, exercise and its role in immune function, uh, both during chronic exercise and acute exercise, and, and a lot of the research that's been done there. So when we talk about the immune system, and one of the things to understand is unlike other systems that we've talked about thus far, uh, the immune system literally covers every square inch of your body. Um, you know, when we talk about skeletal muscle, you know, that's just skeletal muscle. When we talk about the endocrine system, we're talking about uh, hormones and glands that produce them. Right? Uh, but here we're talking about literally multiple organs and tissues and cells uh, and uh, other functions that make this a little bit, a little bit unique. Now, when we talk about the immune system, really the immune system is a lot like a military. Uh, think of military as having different, um, different levels or different parts to it. You know, it could be an army or a navy or marines. Here in the, with our immune system, we have uh, an external line of defenses. We're not going to get into that a whole lot for this class, but that would include skin, mucous membranes, uh, various secretions, whether it's in lung or other places like that. Uh, so those are gonna be uh, things right here that play a key role in defending us physically from um, you know, microbes, uh, things that could easily get in our body and you know, cause various problems. Like I said, we're not gonna focus a lot on those. Uh, we're gonna focus a bit on, on the internal defenses. These are gonna be cells, uh, reactions that either kill different pathogens, make the environment difficult for pathogens to function, or assist other cells or maybe signal other cells to then come in and deal with various pathogens that you are uh, trying to fight. And these could be eternal defenses, defenses we call innate immunity. In other words, this is immunity that all of us have. And then there's acquired immunity and that's exactly what it sounds like. There is immunity that we acquire um, from previous uh, exposure to these uh, pathogens and things like that. Okay, so let's walk through some of these more innate responses. Uh, one of these, and actually really one of the first ones we see in any immune uh, response is phagocytosis. So you have phagocytes, which are basically just uh, white blood cells that are gonna act to uh, lack of a better term, literally eat up various pathogens. Uh, a common one of these is neutrophils. Uh, neutrophils uh, serve a great function. Uh, we see these in various areas of the body. Uh, some of them like in the liver are static. They don't necessarily move around, whereas other places they do. And these basically, uh, they just deal with and just literally just destroy um, pathogens. And so in fact, we see these if you have ever seen pus from, uh, I would say a cut that's infected or something like that, you have seen dead neutrophils. They have died, so you can have continued life. Uh, so macrophages are sort of another example. Of those. So we have phagocytes that play a role. Uh, an awesome cell are called NK cells, natural killer cells. Uh, these again are their type of lymphocyte that specifically recognizes cells that are infected by a virus or are acting, for lack of a better word, inappropriately. And instead of just killing these cells or, or gobbling them up, I guess, like phagocytes, they actually cause these cells to undergo apoptosis, which is just programmed cell death, uh, basically telling the cells to just disintegrate, basically. And so NK cells also have a key role in immune function, innate immune function. We all have these, uh, and they are quite important. Um, another one is inflammation. Now, this is not so much a, a cell as it is a series of reactions that cause an environment to be, at the very least, inhospitable to whatever pathogen you're dealing with. Uh, so inflammation that we've all experienced uh, involves inflammation, increase in temperature, blood flow to an area, uh, cells re release histamine to deal with this. Uh, and this, again, creating an environment where not only is it difficult for the pathogen or whatever it is you are trying to fight off to survive, uh, it then allows other cells, we're going to talk about T cells and B cells here in a little bit, 
Inflammation allows them to come to areas. It allows some of these other lymphocytes to come to the areas and are, are sort of both a, uh, as much a helper in anything in creating an environment to fight off whatever pathogen you're dealing with. Uh, another one with that is fever. Uh, fever kind of goes along with inflammation and the same idea of creating an environment. Here specifically, it's an increase in body temperature. Uh, and what this does is again, create a difficult environment. It also increases the rate of metabolism, uh, which can be helpful in initiating other immune responses deal with whatever um, is causing this immune response. And so fever, another one, again, one that we've probably all uh, dealt with or experienced at some point. Now, as, as we're gonna sort of transition here, another one is what we call interferon. Uh, and the best way to describe interferon is they are a, a group of substances that act on cells um, to limit their use or production of other virus antigens. And so there's, the reason I'm bringing this up is because a lot of times in research, interferons are one measure of what's going on with the immune system. And so commonly in some studies we'll look at in class, it'll mention interferon, interferon alpha. Uh, it also mentioned interleukins, which we'll talk about here in a second. And, can be that they can be measured to give us some sense of what's going on in, in the immune response, what may even be initiating this immune response. Uh, and last one, which is a good segue to our acquired immunity is complement. Uh, complement really isn't like many of the things we've seen here. Complement's almost, uh, I don't know, a good analogy, but more of an annoyance in some respect, but it coats um, whether it's a cell that's been taken over by a virus, um, it coats these to initiate other cells to come in and deal with this. It initiates further inflammation. It also helps to signal some more acquired immunity cells to jump in. And so complement is sort of a good segue into our acquired immune system in coding uh, a virus or pathogen here that other cells, other systems functions can deal with. So that brings us to acquired immunity. And the best way to think about acquired immunity is this is something that, just like Gord says, we acquire, we obtain due to previous responses to a pathogen, more specifically, a very specific pathogen. Um, unlike other things we've talked about before, fever, inflammation, uh, even uh, neutrophils and various leukocytes are not necessarily specific for any one antigen. They just act on things that aren't you. Well, here in acquired immunity, these are very specific for an antigen, which then allows us to respond to something specific far better, far more efficiently and effectively. And this can be important because there are often uh, immune responses we have to something that we in inherently may not have either a strong enough immune system or enough immune cells available to immediately deal with that pathogen. And acquired immunity allows that um, to be a possibility. So before I step forward, I'm going to use this word antigen a lot, which is simply just a word to describe something that's not you. Uh, easy thing would say that this would be something that uh, is like a virus uh, or bacteria or something, but this can also be something that elicits an immune response that in and of itself is, is pretty harmless. Um, we all have immune responses or we call them allergies to certain things, which um, may not really be in themselves severe. Uh, pet dander, uh, some people are allergic to penicillin, uh, and these are, these are technically illicit immune responses. And so they do this via not just some of the innate system we require, but with that, but also through acquired immunity. This is specifically T cells and B cells. All right, so look at, let's look at these each individually. Uh, T cells, they're called that T because they originated from the thymus, the gland that you had when you were younger that you likely do not anymore. 
Uh, and there are various subgroups of these T lymphocytes. There's helper T cells, there's cytotoxic killer T cells, there's regular T cells. Just understand they are a group of cells that are specific to an antigen. And so they are not just randomly destroying things that aren't you. It's a very specific thing that they are not only killing like cytotoxic T cells, they're also getting other immune cells involved like helper T cells do uh, to assist in an onslaught. Uh, there are regulatory ones, which like the term says, regulate or control, or is sometimes just suppress responses when needed. And so this is an entire another subset of cells that's specific for an antigen, specific for something that's causing an immune response. Uh, with T cells, we have B cells. Uh, B cells is another line of B lymphocytes. Now, what we know of B lymphocytes, what you've probably heard of, is that these form what we call antibodies, but they're also called immunoglobulins. Uh, and antibodies, in some respect, are like complement, but uh, they're antibodies specific, again, for an antigen. And so what occurs is over time, we acquire or we build up antibodies to specific antigens. So for example, uh, take a typical cold virus, and there are numerous viruses there that uh, can cause that. Uh, you probably know you get a cold. When we get sick, we experience the symptoms of that for a few days, and then we get better. Uh, well, what's, what's occurred is we've not only fought off that virus with various aspects of our innate immune system, uh, neutrophils, leukocytes, interferon, um, inflammation, things like that. We've also developed uh, B cells, antibodies to basically remember that. And so when we come across that virus again, uh, they cause a quick, swift, large response to then if there's another time we come across this virus, it is dealt with quite quickly, and we don't have the same um, depletion in, in bodily function as we did previously. Uh, and so B cells are incredibly important. Antibodies are incredibly important. Um, and in fact, these are literally, um, we can keep these for years. Some antibodies, not quite a few, we maintain our entire life. Um, You've probably heard of antibodies recently when it comes to uh, coronavirus. The idea that we build up antibodies or hopefully we build up antibodies to, to this. So when we come in contact with the virus, we have an ample response to fight off um, it, uh, what it does. And so antibodies are incredibly important in this more acquired immune function. And there, like I said, there's numerous groups of these. Uh, and what's interesting about antibodies is again, they don't necessarily kill anything. Uh, their role is a bit more complementary. Uh, one of the big things that you do is tag or bind the antigens, uh, basically letting other cells, NK cells, other phagocytes to come in and say, hey, kill this, kill this. Um, so think of them as more of a, a means to which to create an even exponentially greater environment to fight off a specific antigen. And these antibodies can be incredibly, incredibly important. And so much so, what we see is when we come in contact with some antigen, we have a response. We have some increase in antibodies, but it's fairly minimal. We may experience the uh, side effects of that virus. We get sick, we get symptoms, what have you, and then it goes away. But let's say at some point down the road, and for this graph, we'll say 28 days, but it could really any time, we come in contact with that virus again, the antigen. This time we have built up those antibodies. And so there is an immediate increase in response to this to cause a massive onslaught of immune cells and processes to deal with this virus quickly and efficiently. So not surprisingly, having ample antibodies to a wide variety of viruses, antigens is incredibly, incredibly important. Uh, it's why antibodies are so key. It's one of the reasons why, um, kind of side note, uh, donating plasma is so important. Uh, in plasma is where we find a lot of antibodies circulating. And so one of the benefits of donating plasma is in that plasma or antibodies that is in that plasma 
can then be given to individuals who may require them. And that can be an incredibly helpful treatment for individuals who may be either immunosuppressed or dealing with something causing an immune response that they are in, unable to deal with adequately. One last factor here, and I'm only gonna mention these just to give us a, an understanding of them because we're gonna talk about them quite a bit in the chapter, is these things called interleukins. Uh, interleukins are basically growth factors. Uh, they play a role as sort of messengers in the immune system. And the reason they're beneficial is because they actually are fairly easy to measure for the most part uh, compared to other aspects of the immune system, but they tell us a lot about what's going on, uh, what's, what antigen we're dealing with, uh, what stage of an immune response are we. And so because of that, in research, the interleukins are measured quite frequently. And there are many different types of interleukins, IL-1, IL-6, uh, numerous, numerous ones that have different names. And each of them have uh, very specific indicators of what they're related to. And so I bring this up because interleukins are uh, a key um, communication messenger aspect uh, when it comes to acquired immunity that can be incredibly beneficial to understand. And we'll see these measured a lot in different studies. So I hope that's helpful uh, to understand an immune system. And um, we'll see you in class.